from the only biodegradable soap opera. When we last left our friends, they had decided finally to go to town to take a chance on the daily raffle. Okay, we got it straight. Oh, what to get straight? We pick three digits from zero through nine. That's right. Then we make a number with our three digits. Then we buy a raffle ticket for that number. Then that number gets picked by the raffle person. And then we win a whole bunch of money. <laughs> okay, now the fair way is for each of us to pick a digit. I pick the first digit. I pick three. Okay, I pick a <clears throat> red pot six. I pick a pick four is the last digit. Okay, our number is three six. Four. Right. Now we buy a ticket. Sir! Uh, oh, y yes, folks. Want to buy a raffle ticket? Sure do, Sonny, because we just picked the winning number. Three, six. <coughs> Wake up, Grandpa. Four! All right, 364 is available, but do you know your chances of winning aren't real good? What do you mean? Well, there are 1,000 number combinations, and you picked one. So the chances are 999 to 1 against your winning. Next. That's okay, we don't mind, because we're sure we picked the winning number, three, six, four, and we're sure we're gonna win, so you just sell us that ticket. All right. That'll be two dollars, please. Oh, fiddlesticks. Now what's wrong? I only got half a dollar. I only got a half a dollar, too. Well, that makes one dollar. I'll put in the other dollar. That makes two dollars. Thank you. And here's your ticket. <laughs> I can hardly wait to get my hands on that money. The winner of the raffle gets $1,000. That's a lot of money. Ooh, that <laughs> sure is. $1,000. So you divide about three people, that's, uh, how much is that? Well, if we split $1,000 into thirds, we get, let me see, $333.33 with one penny left over. Hold it just one darn minute. Why are we splitting our money into thirds? Why indeed are they talking of splitting the money into one-third shares? Be sure to stay tuned for the exciting conclusion of Suds. Square One TV's roving reporter asks another mathematical question of the person on the street. Today's question is, what is a dodecahedron? Dodeca what? A, a part of a spaceship. Uh, some sort of dock or deck, you know, like Indian maybe. Do you... The, the ingredients you use to make bread, I guess. A monster from a Japanese movie. Animals. I have to say animals. Is it an animal? No, that, that sounds very tasty. I think I had one last week. It's a cube with the angles cut off. Dodecahedron. Sounds like something that somebody from a donut shop would just put together. Holy mackerel, I don't know. <laughs> Dodecahedron, dodeca. Uh, 12, three-dimensional figure with 12 faces. That must be it. Yep, that's it. They were waiting to win the raffle and deciding how to split up the money. But there seemed to be a problem. Cousin Pearl said, Hold it just one darn minute here. Why are we splitting our money into thirds? 
What do you mean, Pearl? Because there's three of us, that's why. She has a point. Well, so do I, since I got my new hairstyle. <laughs> See, you didn't contribute equally when you bought the ticket. Pearl paid for half the ticket. He's right. She paid for half, and me and Uncle Willis paid for the other half. Right, she paid for half, and you each paid for one-fourth. And one-fourth and one-fourth equals one-half? She paid for half. I paid for one-fourth. Grandpa Mertz paid for one-fourth, and that adds up to one. So to be fair, Pearl... Keep talking. ...should get one-half a thousand dollars, or five hundred dollars, and the other half, or five hundred dollars, would be divided between you two. You would each get $250 each. He's right. We each get one-fourth and she gets half. So? So what? Grandpa, we go. Uh, so where's our money? Well, they have to pick your number first. And as luck would have it, it's time for the drawing right now. So I'll just turn on the TV and we can watch the winning number come up. Hello, and welcome to today's raffle drawing. Each of the cylinders contains ping pong balls, numbering zero to nine. I will select one ball from each container to determine today's winning lottery number. The first number is... Three. Get our first digit! The second number is... Six. Get our second digit! And the last number is... Well, friends, talk about suspense. What do you think the last digit is going to be? It can only be one of ten numbers, zero through nine. So right now, there is one chance in ten that a four will be picked. How do you like those odds? See if you can guess what number will be picked. <laughs> Oh, greetings. Say, isn't that an ambulatory three-ring carbon moth on your third elbow? Ah! Get it off, get it off. Please. <laughs> just kidding, Blotmo, just kidding. You're so gullible. Oh, would you look at that? The third sun has risen. I'm hungry. Would you care to partake in an uplifting midday snack with me? I would be honored. What you got? Well, let me take a look here. Well, in three of my hands, I have Aurelian sponge candy. You said it. And in my other hand, I have hidden a ripe sea fig from the planet Zerkney. Grandpa, do not tease me. You know how I love sea figs. Yes, indeed I do, treasure companion. And it can be yours if you can pick the hand in which it is hidden. But each of your hands contains a tasty treat. Yes, that's correct, Blotmo. And you have four hands. <laughs> Don't we all? And out of those four hands, three contain Aurelian sponge candy. So the probability that I will pick sponge candy is three out of four. Absolutely, pal of mine. Three of the four hands have sponge candy. But seeing as only one of your four hands contains the delicious... Sea fig. The probability that I will pick a sea fig is only one out of four. Yes, it's sad but true, Blotmo. You'll probably pick a sponge candy, but there is a one in four chance that you'll pick your favorite sea fig. So on, render a decision before my arms fall off. I choose, uh, no, I choose, uh, I choose, I choose, okay, I choose this one, I choose this one. Ah, I choose this one. Even though the probability was one in four that you'd pick it, you lucked out! Go ahead, consume it! Oh, he does love his long Say, would anyone like a sponge candy? No, it'll probably just ruin your dinner. When we last left our soon-to-be wealthy friends, they were holding the raffle ticket number 364, and the three and six had already been picked. Let's rejoin the greedy threesome as they await the final number. And the last digit is... five. What? No, no, we had four. That makes today's winning raffle number 365. Congratulations to the lucky winners. I'm sure sorry you folks lost. Well, we came close. Yeah, but in this case, a miss is as good as a mile. Get over here, Willis. 
To make you feel better, how'd you like a souvenir of the game? Give me your ticket. Pearl, here's one half the ticket for you. Uncle Willis, here's one fourth the ticket for you. And Grandpa, one fourth the ticket for you. There, Grandpa. Don't you feel better? Nope. Numbers are fun, and numbers are necessary, and numbers are interesting. But sometimes numbers can be confusing. Watch this next song and see what I mean. Donnie, tell me, baby, you got the lyric down? Yo, let's do it. Yeah. Donnie, this song, The Mathematics of Love, is going to be biggest monstrous for Tony and the Togas. I'm telling you, it is going to knock the socks off the entire Roman Empire. It is going to be the biggest hit of the year for trust me. <laughs> Yo, Cassius. Yeah, but listen, you know, this lyric, it sounds a little weird to me. <laughs> Donnie, who heard you sing to those sheep and knew you had the right stuff, huh? Who got your book straight into the Coliseum, huh, baby? Uh, Yo, Cassius. And don't you forget it. Can we take it from the top? <laughs> yeah, right, Cassius. So, but listen, you know, really, this lyric, it just sounds a little weird to me. Tony, let's just try it. Time is dropping. Yeah. Cue up your backup singers. Ready, Bacchus. All right. Ready, Uppus. A five, six, seven, eight. I, I, the stars are glowing. I, I, hearts, we're overflowing. Tony, wait, 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 Tony. I know, I know, it is totalist bizarrest. Tony, baby, you're reading it wrong. I, night, it says so right there. Don't make no sense. That means one night. One? <laughs> look, 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 right there, it says I. Tony, this is Rome. That's how we write the number one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you Romans is too much. All right. All right, all right, I got it. Let's do it again. Five, six, seven, eight. One night, the stars were glowing. I, I, heart, we're overflowing. I, 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 words. Wait, Tony. That means two hearts. Oh, come on, look. I, I, it says right there. That means two. That's how we write the number two here. Two eyes is two? Check. <laughs> Donnie, you never learned how to read numbers? Look, man, I grew up in Phoenicia, okay? We wrote numbers a little different there. A one was this. A two was this. Uh, well... A three was like this. This is the way we do it, huh? This is one, this is two, and this is three. Huh. And you know what they say about when in Rome, huh, baby? <laughs> yeah, yeah, skip the geography lesson. I just want to get through this song, all right? Can I do the second verse? Hit it, Tony, hit it. Yeah. Five, six, seven, eight. Ivy arms, we're hugging tightly, be time, I kissed you lightly, so goes. Wait, wait, Tony, baby, you're murdering it. <laughs> Tony, those are numbers, they're not V, and an I, and an I, and a V, look, look, This is four, I, V, you see that? V is five. V, I is six, that's five plus one. V, I, I is seven. And V, I, I, I is eight. See that? Do it your way. No, oh, I can't believe you guys. You know, it was all so much easier in Phoenicia. Yeah, well, if you don't get this right, we'll all be back in Phoenicia singing to the sheep, right? <laughs> Six, seven, eight. Okay, now, can we do the number, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, are there any other weird numbers we ought to know about? Wait a minute, wait a minute. They're not numbers. They're Roman numerals. Oh, numerals. Oh, pardon me, I'm sure. <laughs> now, look, wait. If you were to see this, what would you say? I was afraid of that. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's what this song gives me, the X. <laughs> okay, nine, ten. Do it your way. This is some prank you pull on all the new singers. Okay, okay, very nice. Now, 
Can we rehearse the number? Hey, it's not a number, it's, it's a, a numero! <laughs> okay, we're rolling. And I, and I, I, and I... Wait, wait, a, a one, not a two! Hey, it's just a joke, Cassius. Come on, lighten up. Here we go. A five, six, seven, eight. One night, one night. the stars were glowing too hard. We're overflowing three words. Hit like a bolt from above. you like so That's illusion. Prestidigitation is sleight of hand. Oh. I have something that's neither one, though. This is mathematics. This has to do with a couple of coins. We have a dime and a penny. Yes. Now, Louisa, I want you to pick up those two coins. Don't let me see which coin is in which hand. Okay. Now, I want you now to watch very carefully, because you're going to do this in just a second. Are you Whatever watching? he says, Louisa. All okay. right. Now, I want you now to do a little mathematics for me. I okay. want you to multiply the coin, the value of the coin, in your right hand yes. by either four, six, or eight. Okay, got it. Have you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to multiply the value of the coin in your left hand by three or five or seven. Okay, I did it. Like that? You have the two <laughs> answers? Yes. Now add the two answers together. All right. Have you done that? Yes. What is the answer? 43. 43? That Whoa. means then that the uh, penny is in your left hand and the dime is in your right hand. You see that? How did you, How did do, you do that? that? I'll explain. If the answer is even, it means that the penny is in your right hand. If the answer is odd, it means the penny is in your left hand. And therefore, the dime has to be in the other because hand. Because one is an odd number? He's of right. Course. Of course. Now, let me show oh, you that. I'm going to do this a little so easier. I'm not going to work with this. I'm going to give you these two coins. And you do the same sort of thing. Pick them up so that it's a nickel and a penny, OK? Now, don't let me see. I saw the way you picked them up just then. So oh, you, you didn't. You, yes, I did. I was watching. You didn't give me <laughs> I didn't hand. even see it. Okay, now shake them up so that I don't know which order is which, okay? Okay, now you don't know. I'm All right, fine. fine. Now, I want you to multiply the value of the coin in this hand by 17. Okay. You got it? Uh-huh. The nickel is in that hand. <laughs> you know? Is it right? It he is. is right. You see, if you'd have said yes right away... <laughs> then I'd have known it was the penny. But 17 <laughs> times 5 is a little tough. Now, that's not I mathematics. Did it. That's, that's psychology. <laughs> you are one sneaky man, you Blackstone, you. Mr. Blackstone, what? Can you do something about the magic shoe? <laughs> oh, <magic. laughs> I'm The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. 9.43 a.m. Rains had poured down on the City of the Angels all night. It dried quickly and left traffic in a devilish mess. I was working the day watch out of MathNet. My partner is George Frankly. The boss is Thad Green. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We had been working on the mystery of the Maltese pigeon, a priceless piece of sculpture said to be worth a king's ransom. It belonged to a woman named Maureen O'Reilly who was about to put the bird on exhibition when it was stolen. She told us a man named Jasper Stoutman must have stolen it, but all we had to go on was his license plate number. We decided to look at a couple of scenes from yesterday's episode to refresh our thinking.
We talked with Debbie Williams, head of our computer lab. We asked her to check the license number in hopes of finding an address for the Stoutman. Jasper Stoutman. Any luck, Debbie? Just a minute. I've accessed the database of the Department of Motor Vehicles. What would they give you, Debbie? The computers at the DMV have records of every car registered in California. They can tell us who the car with the license number ADX21N belongs to. And where that someone lives? That's right. What have you found? Here it is. ADX21N is owned by one Mr. Jasper Stoutman. And your computer has an address on him? Here you go. Number one, Cherry Blossom Lane. That's in Hancock Park. We figured all we had to do was search Stoutman's house, find the bird, and return it to Ms. O'Reilly. But it wasn't there. Then we got a phone call. Frankly, MathNet. Oh, yes, good morning, Mr. Stoutman. What? I see. We'll be right out. Stoutman? Uh-huh. He had the Maltese pigeon after all. Well, the case is solved. Let's go get it and give it back to Ms. O'Reilly. Good idea, except for one thing. While I was out last night, someone stole the pigeon from him. We drove to Stoutman's house to get a story. Won't you come in, please? You had the pigeon, Mr. Stoutman, and you lied to us. A prevarication of necessity, Mr. Frankly. Believe me. If Miss O'Reilly suspected I had the bird, she would stop at nothing to get it. That's why I could not reveal its true whereabouts while Miss O'Reilly was here. But we searched your home and found no trace. Where was it? In here. I saw this book in yesterday's episode, but figured you'd never put it in here. I was out last evening between the hours of 7 and 10. Miss O'Reilly had to come by here at that time, broken into my home, and stolen the bird. We're having Miss O'Reilly picked up and brought by here, Mr. Stoutman. Mr. Stoutman, why is that bird so valuable? There are probably lots of crystal pigeons in the world with sapphires in their tummies. Oh, not likely, Mr. Frankly. Not likely in the least. It is one of a kind. My friends, a rara avis. Do you know its history? Only too well, Miss Monday. Do you know of an order called the Mystic Knights of the Sea? Who doesn't? Well, sir, centuries ago they sculpted it for one Harold of Malta. The King of Malta? No. He was the only honest lawyer in the land. But the bird was stolen by a Russian named Smirnov before it could ever be bestowed upon him. It has left in its wake a trail of passion, greed, bloodshed, and death, my friends. All the things, in fact, that make life worth living, eh, Stoutman? I demand you return the bird, Miss so O'Reilly. If I had it, do you think I would still be here? Let me ask you a question, Miss O'Reilly. Where were you last night between 7 and 10 p.m.? I was at a concert. It was Tchaikovsky's Peter and the Wolf at the Hollywood Bowl. <laughs> it was delightful. I was there till nearly 11. Oh, here are the ticket stubs. The concert started at 7 p.m. Uh-huh. Thank you. There are two tickets. Yes. I had a date with a certain Mr. Jacoby. Oh. Oh, she has the bird. I know she has the bird. May I go now? Yes, and thank you for coming. Sam, will you please take Miss O'Reilly home? I'm sorry, Mr. Stoutman. I'm afraid she couldn't have taken it. If she didn't take the bird, then it must have been taken by Noel Spinks. They found him sneaking around outside. I can explain. Then do it, Noel. What are you doing here? As my father before Mimi's Monday, I'm on a quest for the bird. I thought the Stoutman might have it, and I came here to ask him. <laughs> you were too late, my young lad. Had you been here but 24 hours earlier, the answer would have been a resounding yes. You had it. It was stolen last night. Where were you between 7 and 10 p.m.? And I hope you don't say listening to Tchaikovsky and Peter and the Wolf, because that's been taken. No, I was walking on the beach trying to pull my thoughts together. Did anyone see you? No, I, I was alone. 
I got caught in the rain, went to a petrol station, and called for a taxi cab to take me to my hotel. What time is that? About uh, half past ten o'clock. Aha! He has no alibi for the hours between seven and ten. He must have stolen the bird. But if I had, uh, why would I come here today and risk being apprehended? Why, to throw suspicion on Miss O'Reilly, perhaps. No, well, we'd like you to come downtown and talk with us. Whatever you say, Miss Monday, but I swear to you, I do not have the Maltese pigeon. Sit down, Noel. Things don't look good for you, Noel. You have a motive and no alibi. I did not take it, Miss Monday. Are you sure no one saw you while you were walking on the beach? I'm afraid not, Mr. Franklin. All right. It appears obvious, I must tell you. You, you stole, stole the, the bird. bird. No. I must tell you my true purpose in life. I'd rather hear a better alibi. As you know, I am Noel Spinks Jr. My father was the first Noel. I am a secret agent of the government of Malta. A secret agent? Wow. My mission, as my father before me, is to find the Maltese pigeon and return it safely to my people to whom it rightly belongs. Stoutman and O'Reilly have been after the bird for different reasons. Personal greed. Why didn't you tell us this before? If whoever has the Maltese pigeon knew that a secret agent from the Maltese people was after them, they would have gone underground, and I could never have found them. But as long as they believed you and your father were just greedy treasure hunters. That's right. You see, they figured that we were all birds of a feather, so to speak. Okay, Noel. You can go. We'll work on this case together. I will tell you if I get any new information. Good luck, Noel. Be careful. I know. Only too well. Goodbye, Noel. Oh, by the way, Tchaikovsky did not write Peter and the Wolf. Prokofiev did. What is your weight? I don't know. There are no scales in Carter Blanc. That's funny. I came to Carter Blanca for the scales. What's that, Kate? I asked Debbie to search the files of Interpol to see if she could find any names even remotely associated with the Maltese pigeon. There are three. Stoutman, O'Reilly, and Sphinx. Afraid of that. 100% of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. This program was made possible by grants from the National Science Foundation, the U.S. Department of Education, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, and the Carnegie Corporation of New York. Corporate funding is provided by IBM. At IBM, we believe education is the key to the future. We are pleased to help support Square One TV as an innovative way to introduce young people to the exciting world of mathematics. This is PBS. Local broadcast of this program is made possible by an underwriting grant from the Grumman Corporation. Grumman Corporation, a Long Island company committed to education. During World War II, the French village of Le Chambon sheltered over 5,000 Jews. In Weapons of the Spirit, Pierre Sauvage returns to chronicle the courage of Le Chambon.